Disco Dave, uh, originally uh, from Mike and Dave, Crash Crew, original Disco Dave. DJ Lord Yoda X, underneath this brother here, man, original Crash Crew, Poison Clan. Um, DJ Dow C, rest in peace, was one of my best friends, and you know, this man put Dow C and myself and put us under the tutelage. You know, we was from a different project from them, but under Mike and Dave and the rest of the Crash Crew, they welcomed us as outsiders and made us family. And we've been family for 36 years. And from your perspective, why is um, Disco Day so important to hip hop culture? Well, <clears throat> if anybody knows the history of hip hop, especially Harlem hip hop, it begins and ends with Mike and Dave. Um, Mike and Dave Productions, they were the promoters. Um, they helped us build, we built speakers with Mike and Dave. We built systems. Um, we went to we, Mike and Dave told us how to get venues, how to how to how to uh, do everything, man. I mean, from the business end to the promoting end, and and even to the rhyming end. I mean, this man right here, I remember him making us practice when we didn't want to. I mean, crash group getting the getting the house and practice, do what we had to do. I mean, it's just so much. I can't even really begin to touch the surface what this man means to me personally, but to hip hop in a whole. Um, I'm going to blow his own, because he's a humble man, so I'm going to blow his horn for a minute. Um, with his brother, Mixmaster Mike, he formed the first independent hip-hop label, which is called Mike and Dave Records. In the early days, it was only Sugar Hill and Enjoy. Mike and Dave, is Mike's, uh, Dave's brother, worked in the recording studio, brought us in, we recorded a record called High Powered Rap, Crash Crew's first record. Then from there, they, we put out uh, the original Boogie Boys, in a record called right. Rapping Ain't a Thing. After that, uh, the Star Maker album with uh, with uh, who's a uh, Positive K and uh, Rob Bass DJ interview on that right. and Biz and a whole lot of people got these start just on those first Mike and Dave records. You know, and Boogie Boys, you, you know them. From there, they went to the, to the Fly Girl fame. You know what I mean? So this man right here is a very important man in hip hop history. You know, and he's one of the most under rated and under talked about men in hip hop. And between the, the records I just named, he promoted every single party, every week, Mike and Dave was somewhere, man. I mean, whether it was Celebrity Club, um, IS-201, Kennedy Center, uh, man, you name it, Randy's Place, uh, Renaissance. Renaissance Ballroom, right. the Harlem YMCA, and then they took us out of town. We first started going to like Connecticut, Spring Valley, Long Island. I mean, you name it. These were doing hip hop performances? Yes, sir. Mike and Dave and the Crash Crew. The whole world, right? That's right. And then they would bring other acts in. They brought Cats from the Bronx and they put Treacherous Three on. They put, you know, Mike and Dave put everybody who was anybody on. Magnificent Seven, uh, Treacherous Three, you name it. Um, they, brought, they even brought uh, Cold Crush Brothers down. Busy B and AJ was another group they always yeah, promoted. We worked with all those those, uh, those groups back back in the day. Uh, like you said, Busy B, AJ, Cold Crush Brothers, uh, Treacherous Three, Fearless Four, Funky Four Plus One, um, Master um, MC Light, and uh, um, what's the other two young ladies? Salt and Salt Pepper. Pepper. Um, yeah, LL come Jekyll and Hyde. Yes, um, I mean, all those guys came through one time or another and, and we did shows with them. Uh, or we, you know, we were doing the production and they're, they're doing the shows. Um, RC Pat Jam. <laughs> right. <RC>. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think of some of the, you know, the guys. Um, LL. Um, At the Y. Um, Curtis Blow. Curtis Blow. The shows with him. Um, Rob Bass. Uh, Rob Bass, Easy Rock. Um, uh, Dougie. Dougie Fresh. You remember, right. uh, remember doing parties with Dougie when Dougie right. was just starting doing talent shows right. with us at the yeah. PAL. That's yeah. another spot we always did, the PAL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you know that we needed that for the culture during that time? I mean, and that as far as from the business end, how did you know about as far as traveling and doing shows and that you needed promotion? How did you know that during that time? Because the culture was so new. How did you know that that's what we needed? Well, you know, you, you don't know that. You just go with a with a feel, um, you, you know, because everything is being invented. You know, we didn't know we was going to make history. Uh, it was just more of, um, uh, you know, we we, we, were, we were doing parties, um, and 
we started uh, doing the whole production and, and uh, we, we were doing the parties, getting the different groups to come into the venues. And it was, uh, you know, just more like uh, uh, my, my brother, uh, Mike, he was more the business guy. And uh, we would put these groups together and rent the venue out and, and do the promotion. Everything was done on foot. And, you know, and the flyers were handmade by a, a guy named Phase Two. Two. And, um, and we would go out and, and hit the schools early in the morning. I mean, you're waking up 5 o'clock in the morning and getting out in front of the high schools and giving out the flyers. And uh, um, just a lot of running around and promotion. But everything was done, you know, grassroots, you know, the old-fashioned way. You know, now you got Facebook and you got all these different ways of getting information out. But um, back then it was just putting flyers on poles and, and handing them out and word of mouth and, and, and stuff like that. So. Do you like the, the quality of hip hop now, or do you think that you know it's kind of strayed away from its original message? Well, you know, I I, don't, I, don't, I never knock the, the the new cats. You know, this is just I, I just think it's just evolution. You know, and things are just evolving, mm -hmm. and you know, the, you know, the way stuff is now, that, that's fine. I, you know, um, you know, I, I got I don't have any problem with it. Um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna evolve more. Um, you know, the the way. Uh, uh, the groups are coming out, and you know, I, you know, I'm not even, I'm, I'm kind of out of touch with a lot of the, you know, the new stuff that's out there. You know what I mean? And um, you know, but it, it's going to evolve. You know, it's just good to see that uh, we still got some of the original players out here doing what they do. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you see the? I know you said you don't keep up, but where do you see the future? But back then you said you didn't know, but now that you see, you know, the levels that it's growing, where do you see the future? Do you see the future being bright as far as hip hop? Well, well, you, you know, now you got you got uh, big names out there, and these guys are making millions and billions, you know, off the hip hop culture, and um, you know, and, and good for them. You know what I mean? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and um, yeah, where, where do I see it going from here? Well, it, it's probably going to get even bigger. You know, I mean, because you got guys who are much smarter. They have more means. Um, you know, they uh, they have more uh, uh, access to, to to many different venues, and and now you got guys work doing stadiums and stuff like that. You know, yeah. I mean, we we were starting out in, in rooms that can hold six or seven hundred people, a thousand people. You know, and you now look where we at. So, you know, I mean, you know, God bless them. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, everybody's doing something positive with it. Yeah, you know? Dave, in our days, we thought it was big time doing yeah. a roller skating rink. That right. was, we that was a big thing. We were doing rinks to hold 1,800 people <laughs> and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, you know what I mean? So you guys think that you laid the blueprint down from, let's say, a roller skating rink to be able to go into like a stadium? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all it's all been building blocks. I mean, from what Mike and Dave put down with Mike and Dave Records, the next thing you know, you had Russell and he built Def Jam, so what, what Mike and Dave started, Russell took it to another level. Mm -hmm. Then also, like Dave mm -hmm. mentioned, you had Jekyll and Hyde. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know Jekyll and Hyde, Andre Harrell was Dr. Jekyll. So he evolved from what we was doing and changed that into Uptown Records, mm -hmm. you know, and to where he's at now. So everything's always been a stepping stone, but once again, it had to have a beginning. Yes. Right. You know what I mean? And this is, this is the beginning right here. You know what I mean? I have to give it up to this man. You know, outside of outside of Bambada, Zulu Nation, and you know the cats from the Bronx, Mike and Dave was was it. You know what I mean? I mean, they they took a bunch of young raw kids. He gave us they gave us something to do, and you know whether they know it or not, they kept us off the streets. And they, you know they, we didn't know it, but they taught us camaraderie, loyalty, brotherhood. I mean, we went from from doing shows, just hanging out, being friends, and. Dave had the, the baseball league, we'd be playing softball, and you know, I mean, this is, we just did everything together, man. I mean, our whole childhood and youth was together under the tutelage of Mike and Dave. Now, normally, if based upon what you just told me, you know, when you hear the other um, people singing in hip hop, you know, they always come from, you know, poverty, and it's just always bad. But see, you're, you're talking about you guys were young, and you guys formed friendships, and you did other things like stay off the street. Nobody ever talks about that aspect of what hip hop can do, and why do you think well, see, that is? I like to, because see, I'm gonna keep it real. See, some people like to embellish their, their, their side of it, and then, and honestly, if we were poor, we didn't know it. You know what I mean? Whatever we did, we used to make basketball courts out of out of damn milk crates, and we we, we made what we needed. No, we we, we were poor. Believe me, we. Were, <laughs> I, I I remember sometime we we would come home uh, from parties. 
and the party didn't do real well. Oh yeah. But you know the bottom line was the salmon know, sandwiches. We, we used to eat like mackerel sandwiches. Yeah. You know we'd be in there and put some mayonnaise and some not even tuna fish mackerel. mackerel. We try that. <laughs> we mix that up. And, and we'll hand out sandwiches that's out there. That's right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that, that's porn. You can get no porn in that. You know, that's you got right. a 50-cent can of mackerel, you know? So, you know, <laughs> but, but, you know, back then it was, it was just fun. It was pure, you know, you know, things was just, you know, you just done things from the heart, you know? So, um, you know, it wasn't really so much about the money part. It was, you know, these you know, young guys, we all having fun doing this. And, uh, you know, then it grew from that, you know? So, um, for those that don't know, can you give us, tell us what your specialty is and how long you've been doing it? All right. Well, once again, my name is DJ Lord Yoda X. Um, I've been DJing since back in the, you know, I started with, with my partner, you know, rest in peace, DJ Daryl C. You know, we had our little crew and our little projects. You know, we wasn't doing nothing with it. We was, we was just screwing around. Um, a couple of guys, you know, Daryl C had his own equipment, which made it good back then, because a lot of people didn't have equipment. So being that Daryl had the turntables and other people had the mics and this, that, and the other, we put something together. Crash Crew said, come on, and we've been rocking ever since, man. You know, and I've been blessed to work with Daryl, you know, Crash Crew, and the Boogie Boys, you know, all this under Mike and Dave, thanks to Mike and Dave. I was able to go out with uh, Rest in Peace, William Strowman, who was the Boogie Night Kid Delight, who created Fly Girl in a whole new style. Like, like he used to call it uh, MC and uh, he used to call it karate MC or whatever he used to call it because he used to, right. it, the way he used to chop his words up. I mean, it was a whole new style and Dave recognized that and him and Mike and he gave Boogie Boys a shot. Rapping ain't a thing. Dow C produced it and you know, I, you know, we, it's just been on from there and then uh, bringing on Rob Bass and you know, that was family. I got to tour with Rob Bass as a road manager and tour manager, you know, after Daryl C, you know, so it's all this is it's connected. Like I said, Dougie, he comes from us. So, you know, meeting up with Dougie and of course I've been with Van Bada the whole time too. So um, I've been able to stay stay relevant, you know what I mean? And you know, once again, brothers like this man, Disco Dave, the original Disco Dave. There is no other like this man, and I can't give it up to him enough. And you know, uh, and this comes from Lord Yoda X is hard. Cats need to get real with themselves and really speak on who did things. I mean, because like a lot of times you won't hear the story of a Mike and Dave, but you'll hear the you'll, you'll hear the story of everybody else who's come through Mike and Dave, but to leave that part out that they came through Mike and Dave. Why? You, you, like I said, trying to embellish their own story or whatever, I don't know, and it's not for me to judge. But well, I'm putting it out there. Well, you know, you know what happens too is, um, you know, even with like athletes and other people who get famous, um, you know, you, you you recognize the you know the last handful of people who got you wherever they got you, and sometimes you forget that first grade teacher. You know what I mean? So, yeah, who, who knows why? But you know, it, it's not. I don't think it's any slight, you know, a, 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 a lot of people may not do it, they, they probably don't do it intentionally, but, but, but that happens, you know. You know, but, but everybody started somewhere, and you know, a lot of the, the groups, uh, the older groups, they came through one time or another. You know, we worked with them one time or another. Now, you know, if God's going to give you credit, you know, some of them do, some of them don't, you know. <clears throat> but, you know, I see a lot of them and, you know, it's like, okay, this guy threw me on the back of the album or he gave a shout out here. You know, it's all appreciated. And those who didn't, I just hope everybody's doing well. That's the bottom line. We just want to see everyone doing well. You know, it's good to see, you know, everybody still, you know, the whole crash crew, all these guys are still running around and they got all this energy in their 50s. <laughs> but it's a beautiful thing, you know.